Okay, today's about the Runcam 5 Orange. New update. They're putting a gyro data uh, uh, Excel or a, a CSV file along with your video. Um, so if you have some image stabilization software that, that can read that, I think Gyro Flow can do it. So that's pretty cool. I'll post my camera settings. We're going to compare it to the DJI. This camera is only $100. It's pretty simple to use. It's pretty cool. It's a great concept. I'd be willing to pay more if the image was better. I thought it did 4K 60, but it turns out I can't find a 4K 60 setting for it. It's 4K 30 or 2K 60, 2.7. So I'm going to go 2.7K 60 with image stabilization. Then I'm going to go 2K 60 without image stabilization. The DJI footage will be just be 1080p at 60 frames per second and whatever settings I can find that seem the best for the environment and the lighting that I'm in. And then we'll compare those and you can make a decision whether this camera might be good for you. It's not going to be good for professional use, but, you know, if all you have is an analog drone, then this is much better than that for sharing with your friends and stuff like that. Um, especially if you know how to edit videos. So we'll do that. And then also I'm building, I'm going to an all analog setup. I'm just not having a whole lot of fun. So this is actually the uh, Flywoo four inch Explorer. I'm gonna put a run cam split in here, which I have already brand new that I got a long time ago and never used. And I'm gonna put a Rush FPV 800 milliwatt VTX in it, and I'm just going to try the, the, the good old analog setup. So uh, I haven't flown analog, but I have a feeling analog's not going away. Analog's only going to get better, and analog is going to be something you might have to fall back on in the future. Um, most people are probably familiar with the Flywoo Explorer. Well, this is a little bit different. I have a, an all-in-one board. And uh, this is gonna just be my own kind of build. I'm just using basically the frame. So that'll be interesting, but it's very, very, very fiddly because look at the size of the pads. You know, they're just so small that, uh, I don't know if that's better or not, but uh, yeah, it's, it's easy to bridge them, so. Um, I'm taking my time with it. I got the motors on. I got some LEDs here that'll 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 run while the motors are running. I'm just putting those on the back, and then you know the other things. But this frame wasn't that expensive, and I have a Vista, but I don't want to use it on this. Uh, I'm going to save it for something. <laughs> but this is going to be my new analog drone. These are my camera settings. You can see uh, I have. Uh, stabilization on white balance is locked at cloudy it's 2.7 K 60 frames a second and I had the shutter speed locked at uh, 1 over 20 and the ISO was on auto um, I, I'm doing this audio voiceover after the fact because I had all kinds of technical difficulties out there in the field and I just couldn't keep the audio straight. I had problems with my GoPro, I had problems with my drone, I had some desyncs. So my audio as I was talking, as I was flying, just wasn't working out. But anyway, obviously the run cam footage is gonna be the main view and then down on the right right now is the DJI. And the DJI, uh, had I spent more time adjusting that, it looks every bit as good as the run cam. But if you don't have a full DJI Air unit with an SD card, um, this is an alternative. And I'm sure with some practice and just some memory of using the camera on a daily basis, you could really probably make this better. I think most guys who do reviews on these cameras, including myself, just take a guess at it and then they give their review. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure if somebody really took some time, they could figure this out and make it a lot better. The other thing is you got to have a good drone for this one because 
if you have jello i don't know if that's going to work for jello i don't know if that image stabilization is going to work for jello uh, this is a five inch drone it flies really true and uh, there's no jello the camera's mounted on there solid as a rock so we don't have to worry about that my flying's not the greatest so maybe that could use a little stabilization but uh, i didn't expect these cornfields to be this tall if you look at some of my other videos it's never this tall but this these corn stalks are taller than i am now and i was really with after i had those desyncs i was afraid i was going to drop that drone in the middle of that cornfield somewhere and then on the second clip i had my batteries mixed up i had a lithium ion battery on i, on, I put on the drone that's normally the battery i use in my goggles but they're the same exact physical size and it just kept dying and I couldn't figure out. And then I'm like, oh my God, I got the, the Lion pack on the, on the drone. So it's a double lesson. This drone will not fly more than about two feet before it dies uh, on a lithium ion pack. It's not designed for that. And I think I ruined the battery because it has, it was meant for goggles and it had a, a, a little circuit board in it. I've, I've, I, I had one of these before that I turned into a, a four inch long range pack for my crocodile baby. But the circuit board burns out. You still get voltage on the, on the uh, balance lead. Now here we go for my second one. ISO, I have set at a hundred now. Stabilization is off. Exposure I set at 0.3. Low light enhancement is on now. You can't do them both at the same time. You can't do low light and image stabilization at the same time. Now this with no stabilization, I think actually looks better because you do get a better video quality without all that cropping and business that happens with the camera when it tries to stabilize. The downside is if you put this on a shaky little drone with a lightweight frame that has a lot of wobble, you're going to get a lot of jello in it. So um, it's kind of a catch-22. Small cameras go on small drones. Small drones have a lot of jello. Uh, but if all you have is an FPV analog camera and you want to share video with enough practice, with this camera you'd be fine and sharing this on youtube and stuff you don't even have to tell anybody what kind of camera you're using i think it was 99 dollars when i bought it you just use the app you make your best guess at all the settings and then you it creates a qr code you take a picture with it and then that sets your camera settings and then when you get out there you just hit go and then it's a good idea to do a second flight with slightly different second guess uh, camera settings unless you have a laptop right there and all kinds of time and you don't have to worry about people showing up and telling you to get the hell off their property or whatever then uh, you won't know what you get until you get home so you got to make your best guesses these settings are pretty good for the day it's a cloudy day I don't have any ND filters for this camera um, if it was a sunny day, I would have put it on sunny. But you always want to lock the white balance. If you don't lock the white balance on an FPV footage, it's just going to constantly change, and that's going to be very hard to edit. So you can lock the white balance, and then you can edit your temperature or something like that in, in your editor, depending on what kind of editor you're using. But I, I use cell phone editors for the most part. Some of this is Premiere Pro, um, but... Uh, Luma Fusion and even uh, some simple uh, editors. Uh, DJI has one called uh, DJI Air, or, or what is it? It is the a video editor that comes with the uh, the Fly app that comes with the Air Two and the Mini. Um, and you can download that uh, app for free. It comes with the app that you use to fly the drone. So you download the whole app, but the editor, the video editor is in there and it's free and you can do some color correction and speed ramping and different things in it. It's not bad for free. And then you have iMovie, which I have used a lot of times. That's pretty good if you, once you get to learn it. And I use LumaFusion, uh, Filmmaker Pro, and 
uh, Premiere Pro on my computer. I've also used Fire, uh, Shotcut, and uh, I've tried DaVinci, but it's too complicated. Too much to learn. Uh, Premiere Pro is bad enough. It's an amazing program, but it, it's a little advanced uh, for just this kind of stuff.